welcome to chapter 20 of our exploration of Wuthering Heights. Thank you for joining me once again and don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell and please explore my other videos if any of those are of use to you. So without further ado, let's have a look at chapter 20. Again, not that long a chapter here, but there's some significant events in terms of developing the narrative. So we have end of the last chapter there was the threat to Joseph coming down saying he wants the boy otherwise Heath is going to come down himself and I'm not I'm not as bad as Heathcliff if Heath is rejected he's going to go through the roof not literally he's going to be angry and he's going to come down and collect him so that's why this chapter begins with to obviate the danger of this threat being fulfilled Mr Linton commissioned me to take the boy home early on Catherine's pony so this is obviously still it's Nelly telling Lockwood what happened and so on Catherine's pony, which we've heard about before, and he's now going to stay with his father. But why have I not heard of him before? Asked Linton. So been withholding of information has been a theme we've seen recently as well, like with young Cathy. And she's got a kind of parallel childhood in some ways to the uh, Linton Heathcliff upbringing that we're seeing here i hesitated then because it is <laughs> it is confusing it's always confusing but this is yeah talking about linton heathcliff so we had he had business to keep him in the north i i answered and your mother's health required her to reside in the south so this is one of those things where it's kind of true from a certain point of view if you're wanting to take a sort of philosophical look at it how am i to love papa i don't know him Oh, all children love their parents, I said. Your mother perhaps thought you would want to be with him if she mentioned him often to you. Let us make haste. So this is, again, a lot of this is very much about softening the impact for Linton Heathcliff, who is a very delicate, frail young man, isn't he, as well? And this is ironic, considering all children love their parents. Yeah, yeah OK, we'll remember Nellie grew up with... Hindley and did Hindley receive a lot of love from his parents mm, I don't know anyway but I think it's definitely it's links to the theme of upbringing doesn't it really and how that influences your adult life as well is Wuthering Heights as pleasant a place as Thrushcross Grange it is not so buried in trees I replied it's not quite so large but you can see the country beautifully all round and the air is healthier for you fresher and drier we've said before contextually that in this era, people put a lot of stock in healthy, clean air, or thinking that clean air was healthy. Which it is, of course, but they thought it was really good for you and that could make you better and those kind of things. But of course, they're kind of right, but it's kind of a simplification, isn't it, really? And it reiterates this comparison between Thruscross Grains and Mothering Heights as well. You'll perhaps think the building old and dark at first. There's that contrast between light and dark of the two buildings as well. It's the next best in the hood. And then there's reference to about rambles on the moors and things when he's better and that would be good for his health. So again, this is trying to see the positive. You've got the characters here trying to see the positive for Linton. But of course, really, you could say there's dramatic irony here because we know that Linton isn't going to have a wonderful life with Heathcliff up at Wuthering Heights. It's pretty obvious. His description here is something to note as well but he has black hair and eyes and looks stern and he is taller and bigger altogether he'll not seem to you so gentle and kind at first perhaps because it is not his way so this is again it's very it's very oh it's litotes is an example of isn't it it's an example of litotes so it's really like understatement for effect where Heathcliff's violent nature and his threatening nature is really being played down here so Bronte's using that and she's got she's using that she's having Nellie say it to Linton to help to soften the blow of this new life he's going to experience at Wuthering Heights black hair and eyes mused Linton I can't fancy him and I'm not I am not like him am I so this again reflects cultural values of the time black hair and eyes and it could even link to prejudice and racism potentially as well then we have next page hello Nelly said Mr Heathcliff when he saw me I feel I should come 
come down and fetch my property myself. You've brought it, have you? Let's see what we can make of it. So it, so impersonal pronoun chosen by Bronte here for Heathcliff to say again for Heathcliff it's power and property and it's all linked his concept of fatherhood it's there's no sense of affection it's going to be the idea of Linton Heathcliff is useful to him as a means of power and control because again contextually speaking the way that property works and inheritance work Heathcliff has got access here through into the Linton family line as well so he can exact his revenge as well through the appropriation of property and it's through people so that's where we get it. Surely said Joseph after a grave inspection he swapped you with your master and yon's his lass. So this is if this is a, he's saying that young Linton is very effeminate. God, what a beauty, what a lovely, charming thing. Haven't they read it on snails and sour milk, Nelly? Oh, damn my soul, but that's not worse than I expected. The devil knows I was not sanguine. So this is all used ironically. We've got a rhetorical question here as well. This exclamatory sentence, that would be quite shocking to young Linton Heathcliff as well. But that's worse than I expected that. Again, more impersonal. In this case, it's a determiner, not a pronoun, but it's more impersonal language choices. And again, the links to the devil there as well and the, and the threat. Thou art thy mother's child entirely. Where is my share in the puling chicken? So we've said before about all the animal references and animal imagery and animal metaphors. And we have another one here of chicken, which is a female creature isn't it it's a bird you know you think about it like that that's the idea of Linton Heathcliff here Bronte is establishing it that he's weak that he's effeminate he's very different to Heathcliff and again I'm not saying you know women are weak here you get what I mean it's in the novel you can see that's how he's being depicted he's far from the very hyper masculine presentation of Heathcliff who is his father. And Cher is interesting because it's thinking, obviously they didn't really think about genetics in these days, but Cher has connotations of value and wealth and money as well. So I think that's an interesting choice there as well. You are my son then, and I'll tell you, your mother was a wicked slut to leave you. word has undergone pejoration. It's actually got stronger offensive meaning in modern times even though it would actually be quite offensive even then as well so it's increased in semantic potency actually is another way of describing it but in the time Bronte was writing it really just means it's called it sort of slovenly as a mother neglectful as a mother uh, that's what he's going for it's not to do with sexual promiscuity in that era but again it doesn't affect you from interpreting in that way it can you know, it's, if you're approaching from a literary angle rather than a linguistic angle, then you could talk about the interpretation of in ignorance of the sort of father you possess. Now, don't wince and colour up, though it is something to see you have not white blood. So the idea of him kind of being embarrassed and uncomfortable, he's so pale, some of the blood is actually showing through. So it looks like yeah, otherwise, normally it looks like he's got white blood, so it's really hyperbolic there as well. And here we go with all the the real reason Heathcliff wants Linton with him. My son is prospective owner of your place, and I should not wish him to die till I was certain of being his success successor. So this is all about potentially accessing all of the land and property wealth of the Linton estate and he's a fussy young thing old Linton Heathcliff I say young he's not old is he young Heathcliff he doesn't want to eat the food that he's giving his normal food he eats is I suggested boiled milk or tea and the housekeeper received instructions to prepare some so very again very infantile kind of food he's very weak we saw him arrive didn't we last chapter like wrapped up in blankets and everything and so there's that further infantilization of him. And he's used to being 
looked after and he's pretty much constantly sick all the time, as in ill all the time. So Nelly gets out of there sharpish, essentially, and goes back to Thrustcross Grange. So that was a pretty short little chapter there. So I hope you found that one useful. Again, as I say, like, comment, subscribe, notification bell, have a look at my other videos and have a good day or night, whatever you are doing. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.